Hey everyone, so this is the third module, Thermal Physics. The overview, the overview of this chapter will be, firstly, kinetic model of matter, followed by transfer of thermal energy, temperature, and thermal properties of matter. So for the kinetic model of matter, these are the three things that we'll be looking at. States of matter, Brownian motion, and the kinetic model. So from primary school, we all know that there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. But do we know their properties? So the first thing you'll be looking at is the properties of solid, liquid, and gas, respectively. So for solid, they have a fixed shape and fixed volume. This is due to the strong attractive forces between the molecules and the fact that they are close to each other, the, that the particles are close to each other and are tightly packed. So in solid, the particles look something like this. So as you can see, the particles are really close to each other and there is not much space for them to move about. So the motion of the particles will be vibrating about their fixed positions for solids. For liquid, they have no fixed shape nor fixed volume. Sorry, for liquid, they have no fixed shape, but they have a fixed volume. So why is it they have no fixed shape? Even though they have strong attractive forces, the forces from liquid are less than that of the solid. Hence, liquid particles look somewhat like this and they are in a disorderly manner. The distances between the particles are also close to one another but then again they are not as close as that of a solid as well. So the, sol so the particles in a liquid their motion would be to move among one another by sliding across each other. For gases they have no fixed shape and no fixed volume. Now liquids and solids have fixed volume because the distance between the molecules are relatively close to each other. But for gases, they are really far apart like this. So they can just flow anywhere to take up any shape of a container. But then, sorry, so however, they have no fixed volume because this, this large space gap over here can be compressed when a gas is compressed such that its volume will decrease. So as you can see from here, gases have weak attractive forces due to their, distance, their large distance between the molecules. Interestingly though, for gases, they can move at high speeds in random directions. So in this slide, I have the diagrams for solid, liquid, and gases. So you can see that in solids, they are in really orderly manner and there is little spacing between the molecules. For liquids, there are larger spacings between the molecules and they are in no particular order. For gases, the spacing between the molecules are really large and they are in no particular order as well. Part B, Brownian motion. So how this came about was that one day, Brownian discovered that smoke particles move continuously in random haphazard that So how Brownian motion came about was that one day, Brownian observed that smoke particles move continuously in random haphazard motions. So over here you can see the pink dots representing the smoke particles and the arrows indicating the direction of the particles. You can see that there is no particular order and they are all randomly moving. So from this, he decided to come up with an explanation that smoke particles are continuously bombarded, bombarded by fast-moving air molecules. The inference from this was that air molecules are in contain. The inference from this was that air molecules are in continuous random motion. Now, how he concluded was that. Now, how he concluded that air molecules were moving randomly was based on the fact that he felt that smoke particles could not move by themselves unless there was something bombarding them. So that's how he came up with this theory. Kinetic model... Sorry. Okay, the last part of this topic is the kinetic model. So we'll be looking at how various things affect the motion of gas mole molecules. So firstly, we'll take a closer look 
So first we will take a look at how temperature affects the motion of gas. So when the temperature increases, it causes the kinetic energy of the molecules to increase. Hence the speed of the molecules increases and the gas molecules move faster. So for this you have to remember that Ke is equal to half mv square. So there's a component of velocity inside. That's why when kinetic energy increases, assuming the mass of the gas molecules are the same, the velocity of the molecules increases. So when temperature decreases, the converse happens. So the kinetic energy of the molecules decreases. Hence the speed of the molecules decreases and the molecules move slower. And I forgot to mention that this part of the chapter is very important because it always comes out in the examinations in either paper 2 or paper 3. Wait, I'm sorry, I mean paper 2. The open-ended questions. Alright, so the effect of motion of gas molecules on pressure is slightly more complicated, but it's also a very important concept. So how gas molecules affect pressure based on their motion will be because gas molecules move in a continuous random motion at high speeds. When they collide with the walls of the container, they exert a force on the wall. And the force exerted and the force exerted per unit area is the pressure of the gas. So this is a bit complicating, but all you have to do is remember the formula of pressure is equal to force over area. So you know force, pressure is equal to force over area. And since when the particles collide with the walls of the container, it obviously means that you are exerting a force on the wall of the container. So this force over the unit area of the wall is the pressure exerted by the gas. See, it's not as hard as you think it is. Alright, the ideal gas equation, the equation that everybody loves. PV equals to nRT. Okay, this equation is very important in this topic and it can occur in other topics also. It can be mixed with topics on pressure or temperature. <coughs> so, do memorize this equation. Okay, so for PV equals to nRT, how this equation works is that P is the pressure of the gas in Pascal's. V is the volume of the gas in meter cube. Not cm cube, meter cube. N is just the amount of gas in moles, so you have to use some stoichiometry. R is a constant value, 8.31, just remember that. And T is the temperature of the gas in Kelvin. So a change in pressure of a fixed mass of gas at constant volume is caused by a change in temperature of the gas. So how do you know that the fixed mass of a gas, a fixed mass of gas at constant volume changes, sorry, so how do you know that a change in pressure of a gas is due to the temperature of the gas? So assuming you hold N constant because it's a fixed mass, 
R is already a constant and then you have V is constant you get P is proportional to T so the change in pressure is affected by the temperature of a gas when the mass of the gas is fixed and its volume is fixed. See, now you see the importance of this equation. You can infer things from it. So, PV equals NRT is important. Alright, qualitative explanation. It's good if you can memorize this whole chunk. Um, or at least memorize one set of it so that you can get full marks for these kind of questions because it is really not worth not studying this part and losing marks to it. Okay, so why temperature of the why temperature affects the pressure of a gas? So when temperature increases, the gas molecules have more kinetic energy, move at higher speeds, in random directions, they collide with the walls of the container, greater force and frequency. Alright, because they have more energy, they move at higher speeds. Frequency is greater because they collide with it more collide with the walls of the container more often. And force is greater because when they move at higher speeds they have greater energy and they collide with greater force. So therefore force per unit area on the wall increases and pressure increases. Easy. So, for the converse, when temperature of the gas decreases, you say less kinetic energy, lower speeds, collapse. So when you look at when the temperature decreases, so you see that the kinetic energy decreases, lower speeds, as a result, they collide, collide with a smaller force and lower frequency. And then the force per unit area decreases and then pressure decreases. Now we'll be looking at how a change in volume affects the change in temperature of a gas, assuming fixed mass and at constant pressure. So for this case, P is constant, N is constant, R is already a constant, so what you end up with is V is proportional to T. See this equation is super useful, PV equals to NRT. And what is the qualitative explanation behind this? Is that when temperature of the gas increases, kinetic energy increases, same thing again, speed increases, gas molecules collide with the walls of the container with greater force, greater force, frequency, gas pressure increases. Then here comes the a bit different part, would be difference in pressure inside and outside the container results in a force pushing the walls of the container outwards increasing the volume of the gas until the pressure inside and outside the container are equal so the best way to visualize this is a syringe again so let's say pressure inside is greater than outside so what would happen is that so what happens is that you can see that the volume increases such that the pressure inside and outside the syringe is the same. So that's how this thing works. Okay, so moving on to the next thing would be a change in pressure causing a change in volume of the gas holding fixed holding mass and temperature constant. So again, the usual you can divide it from PV equals to NRT. So fixed mass is fixed N, N fixed T, and R is a constant. So you realize your whole right hand side is a constant. So using some mathematics, 
you get P is proportional to 1 over V. And then there's this important equation that you don't really need to derive. And okay, you you won't want to derive it because it's a waste of time. So from this anyway, from this concept, you can have this equation where P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. P so anyway you can have this equation where P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. You don't want to derive it because it's really not worth your time. So basically what this equation says is that when you have two containers of different volumes and different pressures, if NLT is equivalent, this is what you will get. So that means if your mass is the same and your temperature is the same but you have different volumes and pressure, you can actually use this equation to solve any question. I'll go through with you how to do it in this slide. So for example, so for example when we have a pressure of this V equals to 8, P1 is um, atmospheric pressure. They say find P2 and the pressure, find P2 the pressure when V equals to 4. So we we'll use the formula P1 V1 equals P two V two. Okay, let's have um this be V one and this will be P one. So what you do is that you put P one V one one point zero one times ten to the power of five times eight equals to one point equals to P two times V two. And then you do some rearranging of equations. You get sorry p p p p p p two equals two p one v one over v two, which is equals to four. So your pressure should be 2.02 .02 times 10 to the power of 5. Twice that of P1. So see the usefulness of this equation P1 V1 is equal to P2V2 is when you have constant temperature and constant mass. You can just plug in this equation like straight away. Especially when they give two scenarios to find your change in pressure, volume or whatever they give. Okay, time for the qualitative explanation. So, when the volume of a gas decreases, the number of molecules per unit volume increases. So you just imagine that volume decreases, the density of the mass increases. As a result, the gas molecules are closer together, in other words, density increases, and they collide with one another and the walls more frequently and pressure increases. So another way to picture this is that imagine you're in an empty room then in a big empty room and there's maybe 10 people there. As the room gets smaller you become closer together and the chances of you touching the walls of that room will be higher as the room decreases in size. Hence pressure increases. Okay, then for the opposite, when volume increases, number of molecules per unit volume decreases, which is the same thing, density again. It's just that it's getting less dense. And then the gas molecules are getting further apart and collide with one another and the walls of the container less frequently. Hence, gas pressure decreases.